I want to show you a video that I came across from a Pride event of a girl showing the scars that she got from her voluntary mastectomy because I think that it I think that it's revelatory and I'll go ahead and, and show you first and then we'll talk afterwards okay so here we go And she's so happy. Okay. Now, there are a few reasons that I wanted to show you that, but firstly was, I mean, okay, if she was actually a guy, she wouldn't have those scars. Um, I mean, unless you had uh, breast cancer, which sometimes happens. But beside that, um, the evidence of the fact that she is not a man. But what you see is this this applauding of a mutilation, right? You see the applauding of scars, and also the the sense of um, enjoyment of the scars by her, right? That, that the scars aren't indicative of the fact that she was never actually a man, which they are, or wasn't indicative of the fact that she engaged in mutilation, which they also are, but it but actually represented a point of of pride for her. And also, of course, resulted in this massive cheering from the crowd. Because they too thought that, that was something that was, I don't know, Probably brave is the word that they would use. But what's what's interesting about it for me, uh, firstly, is that this is so obviously a type of self-worship, absolute worship of of the body and the self and what she has managed to to do to herself, right? It's it is completely inward focused. I mean, in just a really I guess barbaric way. But that's what it's about. It's not about anyone else. It's just completely look at me, you know, and applaud me for this decision that I made because I'm special. And that brings us to the next point, because that's what so much of this is for young people is about the validation and attention that they get from engaging in this kind of thing. And I think it's one of the reasons that it's so dangerous because so many of our young people are, are craving that. I'll just put it like that, are craving the validation and attention of others. And, it's, and I think to some degree, that's just part of adolescence. It's part of growing up is, is, is that, is that, that feeling of how do I, how do I fit in? How do I get other people to, to like me in some sense? How do I find my place in the world? All those things are very normal parts of growing up. And instead we've taken that and warped it such that the people who get that that instant, you know, validation and gratification and so on are those who mutilate themselves. Those who deny fundamentally who they are for the benefit of a crowd are those who receive that instant sort of reward. And it is like, it, like in the brain, like you can just see it the way that she, she walks around afterwards. Like she's just, you know, euphoric. She's just loving the dopamine hit of these people who are just applauding her for her, her wonderfulness as she sees it. And sadly, if she ever decides to detransition, and hopefully she does, but she won't have people cheering for that, right? She, she won't have people who are, I mean, basically worshiping her for it. Instead, that would be a very solitary decision that she would have to make which is the t true tragedy, right? That, that somebody who's, who's doing this and making decisions in such a negative way gets the support and somebody who decides to take the positive decision to live in a healthy manner instead gets zero support, gets alienated out of that entire community and then really isn't met with much positivity from, from anyone. Again, it becomes a very solitary decision. And so that's that's the difficulty there. You've heard this phrase, um, gender euphoria. Those in that community describe it as 
the powerful feeling of happiness experienced as a result of moving away from one's birth assigned gender. But really, in truth, this gender euphoria is the euphoria that they feel when they are being applauded and given this extra attention because of the decision that they've made. And it's, it's, it's real. It's like, like, again, you can see it. Let's just pull this up again, but I will uh, mute it this time. And you can just, you can just see the way that she staggers around afterwards because she is just completely, you know, loving the, the energy of, of the event, loving the momentum of this event. That's, it's like a drug to her. And again, she won't get this response if she, you know, and hopefully she does, decides to, you know, reject all of this and come back and live a healthy, you know, hopefully well-adjusted life. And obviously there's only so much that you can do to reverse some of these things, um, which likewise is a tragedy. But I wanted to bring the, the, this up just because I think that people a little too quick to ignore the impact that this kind of I'm just gonna call it attention has upon people who are young and desperately trying to to fit in and desperately looking for acceptance and support and they get this like massive wave of it and it's coming not just from like these pride events like that it's also coming from the schools themselves that are applauding as they call it pride but you know any sort of representation of like the the lesbian the bisexual the transgender all of it if you're if you're in some way outside of what is normal and healthy then then they will reward it it also comes of course from even the current president of the united states from the white house it's it's everywhere it's this constant support for you if you are embracing degeneracy and it is only then that you will get this sort of uh, praise and so we shouldn't really be surprised that it's so ubiquitous now that it's so popular because it is so unbelievably incentivized especially for young people and that is just such a it's such an evil